So I'm uh, Johannes Moisio and uh, I'm uh, the chairman of the task force of external borders in ABR. And uh, my regular job is at the Regional Council of South Karelia, uh, facing the quite big metropole St. Petersburg in, in Russia. But first of all, I have to confess that uh, I'm not from that region originally. I'm, uh, I was born uh, actually in Helsinki. And when, when I was a young boy, and you, you might imagine I have been a young boy once, uh, I was afraid of the Russian border. And still, when I came to study to, to La Paranta, which is the capital of South Carolina, and my girlfriend, Actually, her parents had, had a summer house maybe two kilometers from the Russian border. I was afraid to go there because I was so near the Russian border. That, that is the fact. So I can very well uh, imagine what is the feeling of some American citizen who comes there and has maybe the same feelings. But, but after that, uh, after uh, I got out from the university, technical university in La Peranta, this border region, I, got, I came to study there. I met uh, my girlfriend and later wife there, and I got a job there. So I uh, worked first at the university, then in export business, visiting neighboring country very often, and then. More than 10 years ago, I moved to the re regional administration to work there. So here is the uh, area in the European map. Uh, this is the cross-border area, but at the same, it is the area of ENPI program we have together with our Russia partners. St. Petersburg alone is in population more than five times, maybe seven times bigger than the whole Finnish core area of, of three regions, South Karelia, Kymenlaakso and South Savo. We are less than one million people on the Finnish side. So uh, this is a challenge in the, in the cooperation itself to have a really big, big partner. But of course, uh, we were quite exciting border for a few years because we were the only eu russia border for some time. Uh, this is also, we, we heard about the Basque uh, area uh, border with, uh, with southern France. We are also a transport corridor between Finland and Russia because, the, for example, ample the main road between uh, Helsinki and St. Petersburg and further Moscow goes through our region. 
So, a little bit history of cross-border cooperation we have. The Soviet Union time, uh, I could say normal people didn't visit the neighboring country at all. Uh, this was preserved for not regular business even. It was preserved for business delegations uh, gathered and guided by, by the state, both sides of the border. And also set, uh, specific political groups, mainly the social democratic youth or communistic youth. Uh, and so on. But at the very end of Soviet Union time, Russia uh, became more and more popular. This time we call it so called vodka tourism time because the price level in Russia was, was very much lower than in Finland. So it was very popular to go. Even student groups, students had, had money to go to. Russian side and live very well there. Now, situation has turned a little bit around, actually. But uh, more uh, critical change, we, especially when we are talking about cross-border co cooperation, came year 91 and after that, the following years. Before that, the also the uh, city twinning between the countries. It was arranged it by the government. Uh, was by government regulation uh, <laughs> some 400 kilometers east. And the same was with our capital, La Paranda. It, it was uh, near Moscow, the twin city. And, and uh, now uh, the cooperation in Vibor, which is about 50 kilometers away, is, is quite like. Then we had no, next step was year 95. Uh, Finland joined the uh, uh, European Union, and as we have here heard about the funds, European Union funds, they became uh, possible. First, of course, learning how to work with them, and later on. Uh, for example, I myself came to the regional council, council year uh, 2000 to plan the new program. It's an organization. The situation is a little bit funny that the first government gives money to Brussels and then Brussels gives money to uh, this regional association and then the governmental organizations apply money from, the, from us. But of course, uh, we have these municipalities are, are doing uh, cooperation mostly. Well, I will go to the next point. So, municipal level, it is mostly a project level, level in our case. And we heard quite a lot about the capacity building here. Uh, it is for us also an obstacle, but more, mostly it is in the field of project management. Uh, when and how to use consultants. Yeah. And to our experience, consultants are good in the stage of project preparation, but not, not in the sense that they will, would make the whole project because then, then we end again to something abstract. But to check that everything technically is okay with the project. This is, this is a very, because they have the knowledge on how to make a, a technically good, good application. But then when we come to project implementation, I would not recommend to have the same consultant who has been uh, been preparing the project to be also implementing it. Then, then we end to not a cross-border cooperation actually. We end to some consult task. 
uh, and it may be that the cross-border element is not at 6 million euro. What is different to here in, in Turkey and in, in many programs that we have uh, the ma money of uh, non-EU country in the program. So the Russian Federation is, is uh, giving this uh, national funding as much as Finland is giving. So, so together, another 36 million. And then the projects or actually the partners, applicants and partners of the project, uh, they supply 20 to 30 percent. Richmond Council of South Carolina, which is municipal organization, is the joint managing authority. It means this uh, municipal, this association or union formed by municipalities is doing a task which is uh, very often done by governmental <coughs> organizations in, in other programs. So in, in this sense, we are decentralized. When we had Interact 3A program, the decision making was, didn't have that many stages. We had secretariat who were, took in the applications and prepared <coughs> them for uh, the selection committee. And then, Selection committee made the decision. And monitoring committee was only, at least was only supposed to monitor only the program, not the project. And that, that was it. Then the official decision was made and reports done, done made for, for the commission. <coughs> but now uh, this decision making makes it took, takes time something like uh, half, half half a year <coughs> from the the uh, time the submission deadline because there is technical <coughs> evaluation we have to select the uh, for each project uh, certain uh, person from Russia, a certain person from uh, Finland, and one no neutral person to evaluate, and this is done by per each project. Uh, then we have this joint selection committee, which is making basically the same as, as the evaluators, <coughs> but collectively. Uh, if anyone opposes there, it, it's a half Finnish, half Russian participation, 50% each. And it, it must be with the most uh, decision. So if there is one objection, this project will not get amount of young people to 20, because the number of applicants rose up to 167 applicants. And this year, we haven't selected yet Oops. the people but we have, uh, in time, we got uh, 156 applications and the selection process is going now on. <coughs> and one remarkable thing was that na out of these 156 people, there were 95 uh, Greek people. Unfortunately, not from track and any party, only one Turkish applicant who is studying in Germany, but unfortunately she is from Ankara, but and as cross-border people we will not accept. This was my presentation. Thank you.